Hi, this is Shadi and in this video I'm gonna talk about Jigoro Kano as the man and an educator, his life outside of martial arts. We all know that he founded Judo and the Kodokan, but there is a lot of aspects to him and his life story that doesn't revolve around martial arts or Judo. So. Jigoro Kano was a visionary and an educator as well, not just a martial artist and a student in college of economics and political science. So a few months back, I did a video about Jigoro Kano talking about his antics in Jujutsu, how he pursued it, how he wanted to train Jujutsu and his relationship with his father and how he wanted to grow up and defend himself against the bullies because Jigoro Kano was only 5 foot 2, he, he weighed 41 kilograms, so he added his own ideas to Jujutsu, which is a very violent martial art, to achieve quote unquote maximum efficiency with minimum effort. So, like I said, this video is about Jigoro Kano, the man and the educator, and basically all the dimensions of his character and all his life, not just the founding of Judo. So, as you all know, he was the founder of the Kodokan in 1882 and became the first Asian man as a member of the International Olympic Committee. In 1912, he helped establish the Japan Amateur Athletic Association and also he was a Japanese representative of the Olympic Games in 1928 in Amsterdam, 1932 in Los Angeles and 1936 in Berlin. So up until the, towards the end of his life, Jigoro Kano uh, continued to have his contribution to sports and athletics and all these associations and also as an educator. So I believe that there is a lot to discuss and we're going to get right to them. So now let's talk a little bit about the environment in which he grew up and his childhood in general. So Jigoro Kano was born on October 28th, 1860 in the East Nada district of the city of Kobe. It was the last days during the Tokugawa military government. So right at the moment when he was born, Japan was going through a reform and changes which allowed him to form very unique ideas which will affect martial arts and also education in general. So it was that year when President Lincoln became President of the United States. Kano's birthplace was also very known for sake brewing and he grew up in a very rich family so he got lucky there and his parents owned a brewery. So his mother Sukada Kano died when he was only 10 years old. So his father became an officer in the Meiji system or the Meiji government and they, therefore they had to move to Tokyo when he was 11. And at the very young age, Jigoro Kano showed a passion towards languages and linguistic. So at the age of 15, he entered a foreign language school and at the age of 17, he entered the Tokyo Imperial University. And upon his entrance, he showed great commitment to education and his academic abilities were truly noticeable. His academic record was extremely superior. So this video is dedicated for that, not just to talk about his judo or his learnings in jujutsu, but also talk about him as an intellectual uh, individual. So he was a very promising student and very very talented and he had an academic record that was extremely extremely impressive for that day and age so one of the thing that truly struck me is that although it is very traditional and also it is very easy to write in your own language when you are writing your notes Jigoro Kano did not do that so while he was in university he was studying and also training jujutsu he had his notebook and in that notebook, he did not write in Japanese, he wrote in English. And not only that helped us to understand a little bit more about him, but also it showed how uh, 
multi-dimensional his character was and also uh, he was like kind of forging a new way of thinking new methods of training and also representing how japan was no more enclosed on itself so for example um recently shohei ono had this interview with celine on the igf uh, youtube channel and he talked in english he talked in japanese excuse me so if he was comfortable and was educated in english he would of course would have done it even though he might have an accent or anything but he chose to speak in japanese so even by today's standards Jigoro Kano was extremely skilled in linguistics and also uh, in languages which is something truly admirable um, I know not just in Japan but all over the world people have a hard time speaking English for example or any other languages um, may it be French Italian Spanish uh, but Jigoro Kano for his time and the way Japan was founded back then that writing English notes and other languages is truly admirable even by today's standards so again this video is dedicated to these little aspects about Jigoro Kano not just his martial arts abilities so now let's talk about the 1880s and the founding of the Kodokan so as he moved to Tokyo as a little kid Jigoro Kano developed an interest for Jujutsu as I've mentioned it time and time again but also he developed a strong uh, will and a strong passion for academics so when he entered the University of Tokyo he started training jiu-jitsu but also he was a student in political science economics moral education and aesthetics and during that time he started to change his mind and hold beliefs uh, strong ones in the value of education learning from others and also teaching others so in 1882 he established the Kodokan and worked to spread judo because he believed that judo was the ultimate teaching method because it involved uh, knowledge morality and also physical education so he believed in three types of uh, or three components of education the education of knowledge the education of morality and the education of physicality or physical education the education of knowledge involved constantly learning and improving one's knowledge the education of morality involved the fostering of one's moral awareness and physical education involved the training of the body so despite uh, the fact that uh, you know Kodokan Judo is very physical uh, physical education was just one factor but a very important factor um, and also because of these teachings and beliefs Jigoro Kano at that time he became a principal of a high school and there he established a very uh, detailed and good sports program and he even imported uh, sports from the West and held sports festivals sports like tennis baseball football and boating and that made him very exceptionally known in the public eye at that period not just with the founding of uh, judo or kano jujutsu so this is important to know all about these things of the founder to kind of know what man he was and also pay homage and respect for him in a different way and also learn the many aspects of his character not just the fact that he founded judo now let's talk about him being an educator so whenever someone mentions 1882 we immediately and automatically think of the founding of the kodokan however 1882 was a very special year for jigoro kano that year he became a teacher at the Goku Shuin, a private school for nobility. It was also the year that he established the Kodokan, the Kano Joku, which was a preparatory school, and the Kobunkan, a school of like character building for children, and it was also a boarding school. So the Kobunkan was a English language school. Kano used his own income to manage and fund 
these projects and these schools but in case he did not have enough or something falls short on the budget Kano would make up through work in translation so he was not only an educator but also worked in translation so he would work from early in the morning until late at night Kano turned all his energy into education this was really the year uh, 1882 to really sh make him shine as an educator and on top of it all he became the head instructor of the Gokushuin just four years later and in 1891 he became the principal of the fifth intermediate and high school at Kumamoto and in 1893 he assumed the position of the principal of the Tokyo high school so he was only 34 years old and already established these things. Tsukuba University also enjoys a good reputation even till this day in Japan as a university for teachers. Uh, he also uh, taught there and went there. In 1899, he founded the Kobun Gakuin, a Chinese school for foreign students or the Chinese foreign students. And one of those who went there and learned under Jigoro Kano was Lu Sun or Rojin who later became a very uh, famous literary man so if you see his career uh, of 26 years in education and served as high school principals and teacher he really cemented his legacy uh, in education so even if he just did that that alone is truly admirable but also the fact that these uh, he allowed that roots for judo as well to have a close like a relationship between education and judo is truly formidable so jujutsu went from something like eye gouging and military arts and just uh, really pointed towards ending someone's life and really like a, like a very primal self-defense into this uh, educational system of mind body and spirit and morality which is truly something admirable i wanted to do this video to also show again i'm repeating myself but it's truly important to show this side of jigoro kano not just the fact that he found the judo and his favorite technique was ukigoshi etc so he dedicated all his life for the teaching of himself and also the teaching others and he greatly and he was extremely successful at that and he left a very well rounded legacy and finally let's talk about him as a member of the international olympics committee or ioc for short so in 1909 japan received an invitation for participation on the ioc from pierre coubertin the father of the modern olympics Jigoro Kano was chosen as Japan's representative 13 years after the first Olympic Games in Athens in 1896. So, however, there was still no participation from an Asian country. Um, so Jigoro Kano was the first Asian member of the IOC. Still, there was no sports organization in Japan that could send athletes to the Olympics. Um, and also in 1911, Japan founded the Amateur Athletic Association and Jigoro Kano was the first president of that association. And at this meeting, it was decided that Japan would participate in its first Olympics at the fifth Olympic Games, which will be held in Stockholm, Sweden. And the next year in 1912. So this served as the basis for the widespread of all the varieties of sports in Japan similar to what he did uh, at the uh, high school where he brought tennis and football and baseball etc. So he continued his work at the IOC as a member and because of that work he traveled abroad seven times for the Olympics and IOC meetings in the last 10 years of his life. He turned all his energy into making international sports available in Japan and also sent Japan on the international stage in sports, specifically the Olympics. And in 1938, it became time to really reap the fruits of his labor. And it was decided that in 1940, the Olympics will be held in Tokyo. But of course, that was canceled due 
to the events of the war. And on May 4th that year, Jigoro Kano passed away of sickness on a ship during his return to Japan. And also he died a happy man knowing that he fulfilled his role as an educator and also putting Japan on a map. So it is very important what he did not only for Japan but also for the whole world and education and martial arts in general. So I wanted to make this video to dedicate uh, or dedicate this video for his life as an educator and also as a philanthropist. Jikoro Kano was far more than a jiu-jitsu practitioner. He was a great man indeed and cemented a wonderful legacy. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below. If you have anything else to add, also please share it. This was Shadi and thank you for listening to this small documentary.